Hey there, YouTubers. It's Don from True Cable coming back at you again. Uh, this time I'm going to be talking about our Category 6 Gel Fill Direct Burial Cable. Uh, essentially, this is uh, our Category 6 Unshielded Riser, but it's got a tough uh, direct burial and outdoor UV protectant jacket, and it's got some uh, uh, petroleum based, that being paraffin wax and mineral oil. Uh, gel filling. It's not toxic, it's not flammable, but uh, it does require a few extra steps to clean off the conductors and, and also some advice about how to get the stuff off your hands. So uh, I say we go ahead and terminate the stuff and we'll show you the procedure. Okay, so when terminating this stuff, um, you can go ahead and strip the cable jacket uh, with our version 2 uh, True Crimp tool. It has an adjustable uh, cable jacket stripper in here that's compatible with 6 to 8 millimeter cable jacket outside diameters. And so this cable falls in that range, so it's a good candidate. Uh, just put your normal amount of a couple of inches through there, turn the tool around one time, and then break at the score. And there it is, there's the score. Keep the uh, cable jacket piece around because you're going to use that to untwist conductors. But as you get into it, you're going to see that you got this uh, sticky uh, gel filling. And basically, like I said, it's a paraffin wax uh, with a mineral oil. It's not toxic. It just tends to be kind of sticky. It's not free flowing. In other words, it's not going to ooze around on you, but it is going to stick to you, your fingers, your tools and everything else. So. You do want to wipe as much off as you can. And the best way of doing that is with 70% uh, isopropyl alcohol, um, or actually better is probably 90%. And so what I do is I use a microfiber cloth for this. And it is a little bit of a pain, but you know, nothing worthwhile is easy, right? So what I do is I will first wipe each conductor pair just to get the bulk of it off the conductors and as you can see the alcohol is taking it off and then give them a good further wipe to kind of dry off the alcohol and then you're going to need to get rid of the spline so with the spline uh, generally what I do is I will make four snips on one on each wing and that is at a downward angle uh, resting the clippers on the cable jacket the idea is to allow you to get as much of that spline off there as you can. Also, there's a rip cord there. I want to cut that off, get that out of the way <laughs> as it's sticking to my fingers. And then once you get all these wings cut, then you can twist to remove. And there we go, it's been removed and there's no spline left. That's important because uh, putting on RJ45 plugs is a lot easier if you don't have spline sticking up. I know a lot of people will uh, just simply snip it straight across. And you can do that, but you're just making life more difficult on yourself. All right, so give that another wipe there. All right, so now at this point, we're ready to go ahead and untwist these conductors. So let's go ahead and do that using your uh, free little tool here. Just uh, twist downward with the pair twist. All right, so we've got all these conductors untwisted. And normally what I'll do is, I'll pro is if, if I've got time or the inclination, I'll just give like another extra little wipe to each one of these guys. It's just going to make it easier on you. The cleaner you get them, the easier it's going to be for you putting on the plug. And then we'll use our Category 6 pass-through plug, which has been fitment tested and performance tested with this cable. And the first thing you need to do, though, is uh, comb out these conductors. So the quickest way to do that, and uh, least painful for your thumb, is to use a thin metal dowel like this, or a screwdriver shaft is a good, is a good uh, substitute, and a glove and then run the conductor between the rod and your thumb 
Start at the cable jacket, work your way up. Only one or two passes is, is basically all you need to do. The idea is to get the conductors as straightened out as you can, but without damaging the conductors at the same time. Fortunately, this is a pretty easy process because the cable uh, gel filling uh, will provide a little bit of lubricity, uh, makes it, in other words, slippery, so that this process goes pretty quick and there's not a lot of friction here. All right, so these are all combed out and ready to put into an order. Uh, I use T568B just out of habit. You can use A. Just make sure that you're using the same one at both ends and you're good to go. So I'm going to do white orange and orange, then white green, then blue, white blue, green, white brown, and brown. I like to work from top down, so what I'll do is I'll put the cable so the conductors are going this way, and the white, orange white will be at the top of the stack here, so now they get this all twisted back, or uh, untwisted properly in, in order. And then once I get them all combed out like this, so you got a nice little stripe here, I'll reconfirm the sequence. So you got white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, and we got a crossover, so I got to put this back where it should be white, brown, and then brown. Sometimes it can be a bit of a pain to get an order. There we go. All right. So the next step is you want to flush cut. The reason why you flush cut and pick a likely spot here, something that is nice and straight across and not very many kinks left here is because uh, the straighter and more even this is, the easier it's gonna be to put on your plug. So um, again, we'll flush cut straight across. And then with the bottom side of the plug is your reference point, not the latch side, but the bottom side, your white orange will be at the top and your brown will be at the bottom. So insert the conductors into the plug like so. And then before you actually push it onto the cable and terminate it, you wanna reconfirm the sequence. So white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown. It is confirmed and that's good. And then just simply uh, keep pulling on the conductors. Now this can be a little tricky because now your fingers are a bit slippery and sticky. So it helps a lot to get out your cloth and push on the plug. The idea being that you want to get um, the cable jacket here needs to go at minimum to this uh, ledge right here. But in reality, you want to get it as far up into the plug as you can uh, because the less amount of untwist from here to these golden contacts increases performance. So I'm just going to continue pushing it up. And there we go. And that's a really good termination. It's not as tight as it can go, but it's a really good one. So at this point, we can go ahead and terminate the plug. So get out our handy uh, crimper here. And then put through and then put some light pressure to make sure the plug is fully seated in there. Start to close it and then you can take your hands off and then Fully close it, lock up your tool, and there you go. Check to make sure the, conduct, the golden contacts are fully seated, if I can speak right, and that the conductors are fully flush cut off, and they are. So there you go. We've got a perfectly good termination. Um, all the contacts are down. The cable jacket is pretty far up there, and this is a, a great uh, termination to go ahead and plug into something. But uh, there are some things about getting some of this stuff off your hands that you're going to need to know. So hold on a second, and we'll come back to that. Okay, so let's talk about cleanup a little bit. Now, the gel filling does add an extra fun dimension to your Ethernet cable by having this uh, this totally water impervious gel inside. It's not soluble by water at all. So therefore you're not gonna be able to wash this off easily uh, from your hands with your traditional hand soap. Uh, I have found one method that works is 70, prefer 90 
percent isopropyl alcohol uh wipe off your fingers with that first and then go at it with like maybe dawn dishwashing liquid that usually gets most of it off of your hands now that's not really feasible though for your tools um one thing that i have found is that we have uh, out there is for sale it's called these gojo hand wipes and they're for grease and grime removal uh, mechanics will usually wipe their hands with them and they really work well so for example i had some of that gel on my fingers and now it's gone so these gojo hand wipes are really really helpful uh, they're also great for wiping off your tools uh, just remember that they are degreasing wipes, and uh, so you should probably re-oil your tools after you're done using these. A waterproof tape um, is a good option for those that won't, don't want to deal with a gel mess. Um, that's one thing. Uh, but the waterproof tape has the problem that it adds thickness to your cable. Uh, so that's one of its disadvantages. Uh, and then you have to snip it off, obviously. But then again, with the gel build like this, you have to actually wipe off the conductor. So I guess it's pick your battle. But the, the big advantage of the gel filling is that it keeps your, uh, because the gel filling is all inside the cable and there's not a wrap around it, you're going to have a thinner cable you're dealing with. It's going to be easier to get an RJ45 plug onto it. Um, the other thing is, is that the gel filling is absolutely impervious to water so if you should cut this cable jacket and then immerse it into water and come back a day later and test it it's going to pass every test you can throw at it assuming you didn't damage the conductors so i mean that's the rub right i mean if you've got this really tough thick uh uv protective underground cable jacket here and it manages to get breached the possibility of it not also destroying your cable in the process is about oh i don't know zero uh so uh, I guess it, it's a matter of preference at this point. Um, the waterproof tape, uh, you know, if it if that particular cable jacket gets breached, um, the waterproof tape will absorb the water from it's coming in from outside to a certain extent. It'll stop it after migrating a certain distance, and then it turns into like a gel. And the gel is semiconductive, uh, so it does impair cable performance to a so, to a small extent. Your cable will still remain working, uh, but. You know, if, if you're looking for absolute bulletproof, no moisture uh, can possibly affect it performance. If high voltage PoE, like 60 watt, 90 watt, or I should say high wattage PoE, 60 or 90 watt is important to you, um, then gel filling is the way to go. Uh, but, you know, again, when it comes right down to it, if either one of them is damaged underground, uh, the chances uh, that your cable is going to be working at all are pretty small, regardless of the method used to keep water out. Because anything that's tough enough or strong enough to break this cable jacket is probably going to destroy your conductors in the process. So I guess let's pick your battles. Um, uh, depending on what I'm doing, I'll, I'll pick either the, the waterproof tape or the gel fill, depending on, on the application. I suppose if I was going to be you know, um, running uh, Ethernet cable under uh, under a swamp or maybe through a conduit full of water, um, then I would probably go for the gel fill just just for extra extra protection. But for most purposes, uh, the waterproof tape is going to work out just fine. So it's it's like I said, it's pick your battle. There's pros and cons to everything in this life. So there you go. Um, I hope you found this uh, video useful. And if uh, you would be so kind to subscribe to our channel. You'll get notifications uh, from us if you hit the notification bell. And also, um, leave us a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you liked the video. And please leave a comment. Leave your experiences. We always love to respond back to comments. So you have a great day and happy networking.